Hey guys, today we're removing the skid from this 2020 Alpha Hardcore so we can replace the front skid spring with a Stingray Mod spring. So to start, get your sled track off the ground. I just hung mine from the rafters and then once you're to that point we can start removing some bolts. So to start we're going to remove the bolt back here that holds on the wheel and I found it best to use an impact gun of some sort because if not these spin in there a little bit and it's just easier to use an impact gun for here and also remove this one here put down your eye scratcher when you're doing this because i just it takes some of the tension off there and it's easy to get the bolts out so let's get those bolts out real quick so when i went to remove the front bolt of the skid this one back here is just turning you can see your eye scratchers right here so we're gonna have to get something on to hold it because when I just go to turn it, I could even get it to turn, it just spins. Yeah, like that. So we're going to have to get a wrench on that to hold it and then break it loose. After you take those front bolts out, it's good to take a good mental note and just kind of put them back together how they go. So depending on how long this takes you, you don't forget. You got the bolt, it goes through the tunnel, then you got the washer, then you got your spring. And then you've also got the rear nut and that all clamps together like that. Never actually took in one of these skids out. So we're just gonna go for it and see what happens. And there's your skid. It seemed to help to raise the sled up a little bit more and it gives it that extra clearance. So once we got the skid out, go ahead and check all um, your wheels, make sure everything's tight. These might be a little bit loose. I can just kind of feel a little bit of wiggle so I might try to tighten those up before I put it back on. But what we're looking at here is the front skid spring. So what you're going to want to do is loosen this lock nut and then we're going to loosen this top one either with a spanner wrench or it's not the correct way to do it but you can use a screwdriver and a dead blow and just lightly tap these until they start coming loose to relieve the spring tension on this and then once that's done we can unbolt the shock take it off and then we'll get back to you and put the new spring on so now that we've got these good and loose, after further inspection, I kind of forgot about this. We don't have to take this one off. The only one we have to take off is this top one, and that'll allow us to move the shock up. Then we can get all the parts off of it and put our new spring back on. So that looks to be about 10 millimeter, and I will be right back. And so it turns out in order to get the shock back, as you can see, it's hitting up here. We're gonna have to loosen a limiter strap or just disconnect this bottom portion and that'll allow us to lift this up and have access to the spring. And now that I got strap out of the way, take off the boot, pick up the shock, and just go take off this little retention piece like so. And then the whole spring will come up and over your shock. And then we can go back in with the new one next. Okay, I've got the factory spring out now. This is the factory spring. This is the aftermarket Stingray spring. And as you can see, there's a lot of difference there. I mean, I can grab the stock spring with my hand and I mean, I'm compressing that pretty well. The Stingray spring, I mean, I can barely get that thing to move. It's a lot heavier duty spring. So now what we're gonna have to do, it's pretty simple. You're gonna pick up your shock, slide that on. You're gonna slide this little piece up, put your retainer in, 
And now we just have to tighten the chucks down here until the slack's out. So now that we got the spring on, I gave the guy a call from Stingray. He's a really nice guy. If you are installing one of these, give him a call. He'll help you out. So this part's important. So when we put this on, then we have to figure out how many times we need to turn these. So right now, you can still hear there's a rattle in there. What we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to tighten this to the point where that rattle goes away. So it may, there still might be a little bit there. Still making a little bit of a noise. We're going to go a little bit more. Then all that rattle is gone. Then from there, we're going to leave it as is. And then we're going to put all this back together, bolt it up. Then once we're done with that, then we can set how many turns we go on this for the pressure. So now that we have the shock bolted back up and the limiter strap bolted, you can see that there's tension on the spring now. And that's why it's so important that before you hook the shock back up is that you set the tension of this to begin with. And so now that we've got it all hooked up, we can now um, actually screw that into the appropriate mount. And everyone recommends about four and a half turns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Sharpie. I'm going to color that in a little bit just so I know. And I'm going to go four and a half revolutions with this. And that should be set about perfectly. You can run it at about two to six apparently they say around six turns it gets pretty harsh and rigid and around two it's too soft and about four and a half seems to be about the sweet spot but that's something you guys can experiment with with yourselves and then see how it goes so i'm gonna get this turned up get this locked on and then we'll move on to the next part so now that we've got that compressed to where it should be the lock ring pressed up against it we checked everything over that's good to go now on a lot of sleds, he says, you need to loosen this back shock. And then when it's on the sled, you jump up and down on it and set to where it should be. I told him, you know, about how many threads I had shown. He said that should be about right. I got about seven showing. So when we put it back on the sled, we'll jump up on it. If this bottom and out are going too low, then we can adjust this back and forth as needed. Now it's time to get the skid back in. All right, so now that, that that's in and aligned, we'll probably have to do a little bit of shifting with it, lowering the sled a little bit. But once you can, you'll kind of see what's going on, and then just match up your bolt holes and put those back in. And we'll get back to you when we're getting ready to set it up to see how it feels. So after messing with this a while, I finally got those front bolts in. And to do that, I get that rail to slide back a little bit. That was a hard part. It'd probably help if you add another person. But I just took a ratchet strap on each side and I hooked it and was able to tighten it so it would pull that rail back against that track and get that tension right. And then I could use my free hands to actually guide in that bolt and it seemed to work pretty good once I got the hang of it. So if you need help, that might help you. Next, we'll lower the sled down and put it the bolts back in those holes. All right, guys, so once you get the skid back under the sled, um, make sure everything's tight. What we're going to do is you're going to stand on your snowmobile, and you're just going to bounce on it a few times. And what you're going to want to try to do is feel that suspension travel in the back. This is set pretty stiff right now. I'm going to leave it until I can actually ride it, though, and then if I have to adjust it, I can. But this for sure feels a little bit stiff. I can also adjust it on the shocks on the clickers a little bit also, but it's it'll be kind of one of those things that it's up to your riding style. The main thing you don't want to happen though, is when you're hitting this, going like that, you want to make sure your shock on the rear is not bottoming out. Because if that starts bottoming out, it's gonna break your rail, it's gonna break other stuff. So you have to keep that in mind. You don't want to go too soft, but if you go too you know tight, it's gonna start affecting the ride also in a bad way. Anyway, so if you have any questions, anything like that, let me know. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.